Hi everyone, welcome to Force Conversations, Comics and Comments. My name's Jay. And I'm Colin. Welcome to the show. Yay! Right, right, so guys. this week, Colin, there's uh, some comic reviews that you've got for us again. Yes, comic reviews, comic reviews, la 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 la. So, la, la. <laughs> so the first one we've got is yes. Dr. Afra issue three. Three. So, it turns out I was even further behind than I thought I was last week. And I thought I'd <laughs> mega caught up with all the comics. Um, so, yes, uh, Dr. Alpha issue three has already come out. I think that had actually come out last week and I hadn't realised. So, um, this is the third part of the Alpha uh, comic. Um, written by Kieran Gillen, uh, art by Kev Walker. Um, and... I'm actually really starting to enjoy this title. Um, the fir- I think I've gradually warmed to it over the three issues so far. Uh, the first one I, I, I thought was a bit of a filler, and I know the first time I talked about it, I was, wasn't very positive. Then last week I read issues one and two in a go, and um, definitely found that much more rewarding reading them in that way. Um, and since it's only been a week, I can actually remember what happened last in the issues before. And... This issue was probably the best one so far. Um, in terms of story-wise, um, basically, I'm going to spoil this a little bit. So, flashy old spoilers. Spoilers. Wah, 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 wah. Um, because as we said last week, it's really hard to talk about these without spoiling. Jay, you're right for me to spoil this for you a little bit. I think that from now on, there should always be spoiler reviews because right, okay. then we can talk about it. And if people don't want spoilers, then they can watch this after they've read the episode which they should okay. still do yay right so just a little bit of a recap then so basically this story is all about dr alf alf i keep calling her afro. dr alpha and, and i will call her dr alpha because it's, i like that it's dr. Aye, aye, aye. Afro, but with uh, yeah, an a instead she, of an o yeah i know that but i'm calling her dr alpha <laughs> so dr <laughs> alpha uh it turns out she's not even a doctor anymore because she's had that revoked um it it's also in the backstory revoked yeah, we found out that in the uh, in the backstory that she also probably cheated to get a doctorate, um, and so this story has seen her basically go on a mission to find an ar- artifact. Um, she's got a crew of BT and Triple Zero plus um, the Wookie Krasantha, whatever his name is, Krasantha. Yeah, that's Krasantha. Chrysantan. Chrysantan is how I'm going to go with today. <laughs> um, and so they've basically, uh, Bauer crew, Chrysantan's only hanging around with her because she owes him some money. Um, BT and Triple Zero are just psychos. So, um, and they've picked up her dad along the way. Now, her dad, it turns out, is one of these crazy different force worshippers. Not 100% sure what type he is. I've probably forgotten that bit. Um, but he's definitely a force worshipper um, mm-hmm. and and follows the Jedi and is always kind of... And it turns out he's not been a very good dad, um, very neglectful of Alpha or Alpha or Alpha, Alpha <laughs> Dr. Afro. Is, is this, still set, <laughs> this story is set before Empire, right? It's yes, this is all set in the same time zone that the Star Wars and the Darth Vader comic right. are set in. Um, and so, at the end of issue two, um, her dad's joined them, and they're basically, she was trying to sell an artifact, turns out she got her license revoked, so she couldn't sell it for the money she wanted to sell it for, and so, um, she ended up picking her dad up instead, and he's got some weird thing, and he wants to go on a quest, and it turns out the planet that he wanted to go on a quest to, to try and put some jewel thing into some map thing, Cool, look at me being technical. <laughs> um, was Yarvin four? Ooh. So again, the this is just after. Yavin. Yeah, and so this is uh, just after um, the um, events of Star Wars: A New Hope. Okay. So actually, when they get there, it's all occupied by the Imperials, and they've taken over, and and 
So it's an occupied planet. So they see, do they see the Masasi temple? <clears throat> yeah. So that's when that's the first thing you see, and you see all the stormtroopers and everything in the temple and all and, that kind of thing. And do you have one of the stormtroopers in the tower going pew pew? pew. <laughs> no. Oh. If I think if you did, they would have caught them. I don't know. Um, so so that was a really nice ending to episode two, issue two. Sorry, and and so we start straight into that. Um, first bit is we get a bit of a conversation between. Um, Afro and her dad, and uh, <laughs> she basically, you get to see a bit more of her human side, because um, it turns out, she's going, oh yeah, this is Yarvin 4, you know, this is where the Battle of Yarvin's happened, and her dad's like, what, what's the Battle of Yarvin, he says, you know, like, where the Death Star was blown up, where, where's her dad been? He's like some monk, and he's a bit oh, like he's just, just comp- been and he's just been studying. There. He's been studying the Jedi and studying whatever this crystal thing he's got, and he wants to put somewhere. That's been his life's work, kind of thing. And as I said, it sort of turns out that you know he, she he's ignored her, he's ignored his wife, and his mother left, and that kind of thing. Um, and he's like oblivious. He goes, "Oh, I thought the Death Star was a, was a made up story. It was a, a rumor." And then so, and she got all eggy about. <laughs> Oh, well, what about all the million people that died when Old Around was blown up? And, and um, you know, that's... And, and so it made her seem a bit more, you know, she cares Why about she people. Cares. Yeah. Because yeah. even 3PO sort of like, not 3PO, what's the name? Triple yeah. Zero yeah. made a comment saying, oh, this isn't like you, Mistress, kind of thing. Not equal to Mistress, to call a master. I hope they're not going to um, turn her into like a... Hmm. <clears throat> Um, the other thing that they've done, and this was something that we were talking about on the last episode, um, shoehorning things in now. <laughs> oh. Um, so, oh, surely you noticed when Jeddah was half blown up, uh. um, and he was like, oh no, I didn't, I just thought it was just bad enough that we lost all the kyber crystals in the temple. And, um, so again, it just felt like, oh yeah, Rogue One's come out, we're going to shoehorn... <laughs> Jedi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also the fact that it was on Yarvin, and obviously we've just seen that from the mm-hmm. from Rogue One. But I mean, some would say that's nice—a nice bit of continuity and pulled it all together, made it one universe. Some would say just oh, you know. did it feel shoehorned in? <clears throat> you know, like it, it could be that it made sense in the context of the story. I mean, it, it, it sort of did. That. They were talking about was the Death Star real or not, and mm-hmm. so she had a valid point. Well, what about Jeddah? But then I, it did seem to me that how did she know about Jeddah? Because it was covered up, but the Death, the Death Star blew up Jeddah. Mm, mm. So how did she know that? <clears throat> so, well, she was hanging out with Vader. Yeah, but I, they weren't he like... Was just like one, one evening they were sitting there like chilling out and he was like, oh yes, we blew up Jeddah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he'd have to see too many wines and start spilling the beans. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, well, could be. Yeah. Um, so there was a nice little conversation there, and then, um, then uh, interesting thing. We cut to the obviously. She what she does is because they need to get into a temple. She sends. Kursatan. He changed it. He's, he's uh, changed uh, it each time. I'm just going to call him Naughty Wookie. So they send Naughty Wookie into the woods to be a distraction. And so he basically starts fighting. Like, you get to see really cool. You get to see speeder bikes and the scout troopers and all the cool stuff that you want to see about the Empire. So it's cool. Um, but he starts distracting out there. And so it cuts to the, the Imperials. And there's someone called Captain Tolivan. Now she... And I've sent you the pictures, Jay, so you can stick this up. She's got this weird neck thing, like a well, even neck brace, or but it looks to me like she's like and a her eyes that you get on your dog when he's been to the vet. Well, no, it's like a, like a, a neck thing, but it definitely looks robotic-ish, and her eyes are completely blank, are oh, white. Okay. So I'm wondering if she's some kind of cyborg. I mean, it doesn't say what she is. It says nothing. Mm. But then that's what I love in Star Wars. I love it when they just throw someone in and don't tell you who they and are and why like, they oh, look cool. Why, why are they so cool, yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
but I mean, I know the Empire aren't ten, don't tend to like things that are a little bit different. So, but she definitely is not. There's something w- strange about her. So, she was looked pretty cool. I thought, yeah, cool character. Um, old naughty Wookie just was totally badass in this. He takes on scout walkers. He takes on um, speeder bikes. He's got a badass gun like old um, matey boy from Rogue One. So, so after you're supposed to tell me the name then because I forgot. Oh, like Baze Malbus. Baze Malbus. That's the one. So there's actually two of those guns out there. Yeah. Well, Ah, you don't see the whole thing. You just see it firing. Again, I'll send you the picture. I was going to say. So these these guys, Afrin, they're now going up against the Imperials. Yeah. Well, no. Well, not Afro isn't literally. Crash and is naughty. Wookie is causing distraction by fighting all these Imperials, so they can get into the temple. Um. So then they basically go into the temple and they put the thing in the thing, in the thing, in the thing. It's a bit Indiana Jones. You know, like when he puts the stick in the oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. the model village? Um, well, there's not a model village. There's loads of little symbols on the floor and he puts this crystal in it and nothing seems to happen. Right. And then they look out this window and then the end of it is all the different temples have got this big shining light thing coming out of them. Oh. So I don't know what he's done and that's the end. Okay. So look, Really good. I'm really liking the art now. Um, now I've got over the fact that it's not more Salvador Lorock, or whatever his name is. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Really great. There's some great moments with their triple zero and BT again. Um, they see the Imperial probe droid thing, the little round one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't remember exactly what he said. He said something like, oh, I love your work or something <laughs> to him. Because <Right. laughs> <laughs> obviously he's a psycho. And they're like, <clears throat> Nice oh, bit of banter between oh, them. Oh, you mean the uh, the interrogation droid? That's the, the thing. Droid, interrogation yeah. droid thing, the little round one. He goes, "Oh, I love your work." <laughs> so that was quite funny. Um, look, Kieran Gillen's good. I, I mean, I, as as I said, every time we do these reviews, I love the Darth Vader series. This is an extension of that, as far as I'm concerned. You get to see lots of the Empire, which I know you're like. Yeah. So, good what issue. Very artwork? good issue. Do you like the artwork in this? Good artwork, good story, good issue. I would say four out of five. The the character of um, Dr. Afra, and especially Afra. when when you talk about her as well, um, is probably one of the things that makes me most interested to try and get through those Vader comics so I can read yes. this. Because I as a new character, she was one of, especially as far as I read in the Vader ones, she was the only and not including the droids, because obviously BT and that are totally Star Wars droids, but out of all the characters I saw introduced, she was the only one that really felt like a Star Wars character to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and by the sounds of it, she's she's got quite an interesting story there. As I said last week, I kind of hope that they keep her as some kind of baddie, um, because, you know, it's more interesting. You know? I mean, I definitely and, don't think she's going to go good, but she does show that she's not all bad. Mm. Uh, um, but I think she's going to be in it for herself, and I think I'm quite happy with that. She's in it for herself, and she stays true to that type of character. I mean, yeah, people evolve. I mean, I guess we want to see people evolve, I and mean, that's a nice thing with storytelling, but it depends how much we're going to see it. To be fair, I don't want to see loads of her. Well, I was, I was going to say, do you, <laughs> do you think that... Um, yeah, I mean, my understanding is that she's quite a popular character. Do you think that we'll ever see them do, like, a Star Wars story off the end of this run and then you see a little story about her like do you think that she's the kind of character that has well, potential for a movie <clears throat> i mean i think think that would be a good sh- i think there is a potential there i think the problem the new wookie as well would be interesting to bring in the new yeah, droids would be and interesting droids, to bring yeah. in. I, I think they could i think the problem they're going to have and once again when you get back onto this they shouldn't make the crap comments canon if they wanted to introduce any of these new characters i'm introducing to com- from comics into a big screen story, they are going to have to re-explain them. Mm. Because most of the audience read. will never have read this character or know yeah. anything about them. I mean, even that, you know, even in the cartoon, you know, nobody knows who Thrawn is. Mm. If you put Thrawn in a film, you would have to go through his backstory and retell his story. And I think that's the issue. If you wanted to put Alpha in a film, You'd so, have to retell stuff that so you've already told anything, in the comics. You'll probably just get something like maybe a cameo of her, like, you yeah. know, a little Easter egg or something. I like mean, that. she could be in it, and they, I mean, I guess if you told the right story, it's not reliant on knowing about her background. 
Mm. And you just had a story about She's her. a character that's in the story yeah. or something. Yeah. And then you, oh, the more about this character, <laughs> read this. Yeah. But I think they'd find it hard to actually, because you'd want, you know, the, again, it's particularly if the character has changed or evolved, you, you know, you I guess it really when you shut. I mean, again, there's no point in. We're in such a small window again in this time frame. Because mm, mm. I mean, yes, with her, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. She she's got nothing to do with the Empire or the Rebels, so she could still exist after a New Hope and after a Jedi or whatever, because she's got no tie to it. Mm. So I guess you could see the world. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, what I would probably be more interested is see her pop up in the novels, maybe. Like in oh, the aftermath happen. models. I think that that will happen. But again, it, it, I guess it really depends whether they want to write themselves into are they going to tell our story in this period or... I don't know. Anyway, right, on to good the comic. Next one, then. You've got two more comics here. Star Wars <sighs> issues 26 and 27. So oh, I've right. got... Yeah, I've got something to admit here. Oh, okay. um, the other week I reviewed Star Wars 25... I didn't give it the best review because um, it was just it wasn't a great story. I didn't think in a Scar Squadron and that kind of thing. Yeah. What I hadn't realised was I hadn't actually read issue twenty four. <laughs> 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 but having read and so I and because I basically today I bought issue twenty seven because that came out I think today. Um, went to read it and realised I hadn't read twenty six. <laughs> And at the same time, I realised, and then I looked in my my um, my files and realised I didn't have it, even have twenty four. I was like, oh, no wonder twenty five wasn't so good. Ah. So, so I got all of them today on Comicsology. Okay. Yes. Little plug there. Um, but to be honest, I wish I hadn't bothered getting twenty four because even though it was okay, because I'd read twenty five, there was no, it didn't. It just there was more fight in between Luke and that stormtrooper. Oh. <laughs> And so it made cause it, what was really annoying was I really didn't feel like I'd missed anything. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. So, so, so you paid four quid it was a lot of filler. Is. It was a yeah. lot of filler for four four dollars. Well, it wasn't four dollars, but you know, I don't live in America, <laughs> and it was a couple of months old. <laughs> so, um, so you also got twenty six. Yeah, so I've got 26 and 27, and this is a new storyline ish. Oh, okay. so, so, so we've no got. Luke fighting stormtroopers with lightsabers in this one. Well, oh. let me tell you, guy. <laughs> let me tell you, my chum. First of all, let me tell you who wrote the thing. Jason Allen, he's been writing all of the Star Wars main title. Salvador La Roca, who was on the. Um, boom, 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 Darth Vader title, he's come over to the um, Star Wars title with this whole arc. Uh, so they, they did both of the. Um, both of the issues. The cover was done by Stuart Amonan. I it's think that's how you say his them. name. He uh, yeah, he did both of them. Now, he was the original artist on the first couple of arcs of the series, oh. and I love his art so, so much. And so I was really excited when I, read, when I saw the cover, because also the cover of 26 has got Obi-Wan and Luke on it. Mm -hmm. And so I, so I thought, oh, great, it's another one of those standalone the little episodes. Obi -Wan stories, Obi -Wan. Yeah. So I got all excited. And then it was straight into carrying on the story because oh. at the end of uh, issue 25, um, the the gang escaped because basically what happened in issue 24 and 25 was they basically went on a trip and they hijacked a Star Destroyer and stole it. They stole a Star Destroyer. Okay. And that's what, and the Scar Squadron was sent after them. Vader was on the comms going, go get them. Um, and all this kind of stuff. Don't fail me now! Um, that's the Vader voice, voice that you do. Is that the Vader voice you do in your reading? No, comics? in my head, that's not the Vader oh, voice oh, okay. I do. Oh, you don't the... do it out loud? No. Oh, you do it out loud when you're <laughs> I'm not a total weirdo, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, look. Um, the, the gang all escape, apart from 3PO. He's, ki he's still captured by the Scar Squadron. So, the, the, the episode starts with... Scar, Star, uh, Scar. Blah, blah. Scar Squadron t interrogates 3PO. He's literally telling them everything uh -oh. because he um, he basically, and they make a comment going, this is the worst interrogation ever. He told us everything we haven't needed to do anything. I'm also thinking, how do you torture a 
wrote droid. Surely you can't torture a droid. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you pull his his arms off and his legs off. And... Yeah, but that's not going to make him talk, is it? He's not programmed oh. to talk. Anyway, so, and all I can think about is how bloody Image Comics, um, Wildcats, X Men, this Scar Squadron look with a matey boy with his bloody hood on and that. Um, so that they they um, contact Vader on the hologram phone. And uh, Vader's head pops up, and they're uh, going, "Oh yeah, we've we've got loads of stuff out of him, but nothing really that useful. But he's obviously got lots of, he knows a lot of stuff." Vader's going, "Oh no, it's that bloody three PO idiot that I made. That I'm going to get him killed." I made him as a kid. Yeah, he's, he just let go away. He's going, "I'll oh, just shoot him and get rid of him." And he's obviously blatantly embarrassed. He doesn't want him to recognise him. <laughs> That's what I oh, went into. Oh, I, in, Annie, is that you? Oh, Annie! Annie! Don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so he's saying, no, just shoot him. And so the Scar Squadron hang up on Vader. And then um, but then they decide not to shoot him because they think, oh, maybe the Rebels will come and rescue him because he's obviously been with them for a really long time and, and he's course, gone on that, so many... Of course, that's the, the, the rationalisation they've yeah. come up with, right? Yeah. Well, oh, maybe they have... some junk. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, and lo and behold, it cuts across to Luke on the one of the Rebel fleet ships talking to the others and Han going, look, there's no way we're going to rescue him. <laughs> He's only a droid. And um, Luke's going, yeah, I sort of get it. Fantastic art, oh. by the way. Uh, that, that page is a double page spread. You see all the Rebel ships flying across and, and then you've got that, that beautiful page, beautiful page. And Can then you send me that one? Yes. Ah, cool, I'll put that one up now. Um, and so he he then just goes, oh yeah, his hands are something like, oh yeah, no one's going to notice that we're short on droids. And then Luke goes, short on droids. Uh. Next page, this is going to piss you off. <laughs> R2 D2 stolen a fucking oh <coughs> stolen a um X Wing <laughs> and is flying it on his what? way to rescue Sevio. Oh, God. <laughs> but this is even worse. Luke's followed him. Luke's um talking to him, going, R2 turn back, whatever, blah blah. There's R2 no way we can back. do this. There's no way we can do this. Um Blast it, Wedge. Um And then R2 tells his droid that's in his ship to cut Luke's hyperdrive. Oh, wait, wait, wait. hold on. And <laughs> R2's got a droid in his ship. No, he oh, tells in in, the one in Luke's oh, ship. Okay. And basically, the droid does what R2 says rather than what Luke says. R2 and Luke gets stranded in space. <laughs> so Luke gets stranded in space. And then he decides, oh, nothing to do here. I'm going to read Obi Wan's journal. Oh god! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> ah! Who comes up with this crap? <laughs> I mean, I mean, god. first of all, look, I get. <laughs> Just finish the other story first, <laughs> uh, and then. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't really looking forward to R two rescues three PO, <laughs> but. I equally wasn't looking forward to Luke sits in the cockpit and reads Obi Wan's journal. <laughs> but then I got excited, uh, thinking, well, "Well, I'm stranded here in space. I might as well read his journal." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then I thought, "Great, okay. Well, at least we're going to get a nice Obi Wan story." Wrong. Ah. Uh. Obi Wan's journal. Obi Wan tells us a story about Yoda. Ah. Uh. Ah, this is the one's got Yoda on the front cover, right? Oh. Yeah. So basically, it starts. So the first, so the last half of the, of issue twenty six, Obi Wan tells the story of how Yoda um, goes to a planet to basically rescue a young kid that's obviously become Force sensitive or whatever, a potential Jedi, and he's being held by a bunch of pirates on this planet, oh. and uh, they've got him in a cage, and they're basically saying. Oh, 
you're force sensitive and you can move things with your mind. That means the Jedi is going to come and get you. But is on the this Yoda planet, story set in prequels, it's set right? literally when Obi Wan's still a paddy one. Right, paddy one, padder one, <laughs> paddy one. <laughs> he's a paddy. <laughs> he's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> he's a paddy um, one, so he is. Paddy one, <laughs> he's a paddy one. Um, so Yoda goes to get this 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 potential paddy one um, from these pirates, and they're going, "Oh yeah, Jedi's gonna have to pay." You know, they're not having someone for free on here. Basically, Yoda goes in, uses the Force, pew, 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 um, and. Then, Ends up rescuing them all. But he like shoots stuff from his fingers. No, oh. he's just like do do. <laughs> no, he makes people punch each other. Ah. And it, so look, I'm not the biggest fan of Yoda. I'm going to say that now because this taints the rest of my review. Right. Um, I don't mind Yoda. I like Yoda in Empire Strikes Back and Jedi. I like old Yoda who's just going to be there to full move the story along. I'm not a big fan. I don't want to see Lady Yoda fighting. I don't really care about Yoda when he was young. I, I, if they decide to ever make a Yoda story, I ain't watching it. I there just can't bother with it. <laughs> yeah, I know they have. <laughs> I have. Z- You'll I have, watch it. You'll be there. I, well, I will watch it, but I have such little interest in Yoda. I, I just don't want to watch a story about Yoda. I don't want to read a comic about Yoda either, which is a big problem for me now because <laughs> um, Yoda then. Because I think, oh, well, this story is okay because it's got Obi Wan in, and it's got so basically takes them to Obi Wan and Qui Gon, and drops off the kid, Qui Gon, Qui Gon. I call him whatever I want, John. (laughs) Um, (laughs) John, (laughs) John, oh, John, (laughs) John boy, he he drops him off of them, and I think, oh, good, we get and the art again, beautiful art. They look really perfect likenesses, really good. he drops him off with um, these guys. I'm thinking, oh, well, we're going to get a story with young Obi-Wan. That's cool. Um, good. That's fine. You know, some, something's set a little bit different. No. Yoda gets a strange feeling. And so basically hops in a spaceship and flies off to a strange planet. Lands on the planet. And is greeted by a tribe of kids. Oh. So this is all the things I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I hate tribes of kids, Lords of the Flies, that kind of story. Oh, God, I hate it. Okay. I hate it done in Star Trek. I hate it done in anything else. All I, I hate this sort of thing. And so the next issue is all Luke's still stuck in space. He's still reading his book. Oh, I bet you luckily, can't wait for the next luckily one. they just do it in um, in one one page. They show. Luke Reed, no, they start Is this with number 26. That was the end of 26, and now okay. we're going to 27. Oh, okay, so 27 starts with so that was a cliffhanger. Yoda's sur- surrounded by kids. Oh, Lord oh, of the Flies, the like the Lost Boys kind of thing from Peter Pan, that kind of thing. Um, again, better, better things have done this before, you know, like that classic Star Trek episode when they have all the kids and that. Um, so the next episode, next issue starts off, um, again, really quickly gets, gets in one page, you can see that Obi-Wan's telling a story, Rook's leading it, reading it, and then it goes to Yoda. Um, Does it just like pop out every now and again and show Luke sitting there reading a book? It didn't, luckily. It, oh. Luckily it didn't. Oh, it no, literally no, was just that first that. page. <laughs> Every so often there's a frame of Luke. He, he's reading it now going, got... does not. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the voices like you. Oh, that would be amazing, right? <laughs> that would actually but, make it good. But I did keep thinking to myself the whole way through, I hope Obi-Wan hasn't described Yoda in this story, because if he has, uh, Luke shouldn't have uh, known anything about Yoda, really. Yeah. And he's just read a whole story about him. He's just a great warrior. Yeah. Anyway, but because all throughout the um, this issue, they call him little frog man and little mu- you know little mud ball thing. It's like, well, what? surely Luke could read into it that this bloke is not a, an imposing warrior, kind of. Why would why would Obi Wan describe Yoda as little frog? No, man? it's it's what the little kids are, these what these kids uh, are calling him. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. So basically, he gets it's captured frogs. by the. 
or a thing. What, what's happening in this issue? I'm yeah, not going to go into it very long because I really just skipped through it because I was bored. <laughs> there was basically two fractions of these kids. One, I think, like mud and one like rocks or something like that. Or called Sky Rocks or I don't know, and one like Mud Rocks or I don't know. I didn't read it enough to tell you. All I know is he was with one group. They've got this bunch of enemies um, on another group, and they've got one bloke captured from that group. Um, but there's also a mountain that Yoda's being drawn to that want, he wants to go to this mountain where he can feel whatever. And apparently, a lot of bad stuff happens in the mountain. Um, they have got some kind they obviously know the force but they call it the source no they call it the stone force or something like that mm. um and they've got these blue stones that everyone seems to be throwing he gets he gets whacked in the face by a stone that's a really good bit i've sent you a picture <laughs> of that <laughs> <laughs> he's a jedi he just beat a load of a whole planet of pirates and then he gets whacked in the face by a stone um <laughs> um so basically, he takes this guy from one camp and he takes him back to the other camp and surprise, surprise, they don't like him and they're going to shove him with a pokey stick and throw stones at him. And then that was it, I think. Oh, that So there's like, still uh... more, there's still an, at least another issue of this. Oh, well, yeah, I bet you can't wait for number 28 then. Yeah. Pre-order that, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that, that just sounds like total anus, man. That, that just... That's horrible. Yeah. That is horrible. Yeah. But so, I do think that they should have flashed out to Luke every now and again reading in his... So, uh, so issue 26, the first half of it, I would give four, uh, three and a half to four out of five because it was good. And then the last half, I'd give two out of five and issue 27, I'd give two out of five. So, I mean, it's not, it's, it, the, the bat, it, it wasn't... You know, look, if you're into... If you love the odour... You'll like it. Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. The writing was okay. It was just... I, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what the point of it. I think, for me, it's what's the point of this. It, this is not something I want to read. Well, yeah, I guess... See, that's the difficulty, being trapped between episode four and five. You're like, just trying to fill it out with some junk. What um, I would rather do, again, is just... If I'm going to have a story set in the past... Have a story, a mini series, a comic set in the past, or make this Star Wars title an anthology title that jumps around. You in don't a... need to frame it in the same. St- you know, you didn't need to have the thing about three PO. Mm. You could just had a break and said this story continues in issue thirty or whatever, um, and just completely tell another story. Don't bother with the whole conceit of it. A story, you know, because again, it's just leading to me questioning. Mm. It's Luke, you know. In, it in brings way, me in. Just tell the story about Yoda. If you want to do a four-issue story about Yoda, do, do story it. About Yoda, yeah. But either do it in a separate mini series, so I don't have to read it, or at least tell me this is a story about bloody Yoda. Rather when than I saw half... that front cover without actually reading it, I thought, oh, they're doing a Yoda mini series. I actually did think the, they, this they had... issue twenty-seven. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Issue twenty-seven. <clears throat> you go into that, you know, you're reading something about Yoda. Mm. That, the issue before annoyed me because I didn't realise I was reading about Yoda. I thought I was getting another Obi-Wan story. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing with these uh, comics, though, in a way, w- with it being in that time period, it might have even been better if they just made them about the Rebel Alliance and the Empire and yeah. still did stories about what they were doing in that time. And if you really wanted to put some of the main characters in, they would cameo. So you might sort of yeah. see you know, um, Captain Solo going through like something and maybe someone stops and talks him on the way or you see the droids at some point but it'd be more interesting about how the rebel alliance are, are sort of getting to the base on half how they're setting yeah. up what the well, again a bit like track them a know. bit like rebels in the fact that make your own set of characters mm. in the universe yeah. that you can follow but not make the mistake like rebels by trying to make them too important yeah, just it, make rebels, them like, just make them a group of rebels yeah yeah and make and, and do the same for a group of that. empire. Yeah, like I, I'd like to know that stuff. That'd be cool. Well, but... I mean, this this again goes back to why you know on our rebels with you on the last episode. Why I'm so frustrated with rebels because I thought that was what it was going to be. Mm. Yes, you've got someone that was a Jedi, but isn't actually a Jedi anymore. 
and doesn't do Jedi stuff mm. because he's not a Jedi anymore. And in A New Dawn, he's totally trying not to be. Yeah. I remember that. And and he hid his lightsaber and he wasn't yeah. out as a Jedi. And yeah, every now and again, when he's really in a bind, a bit of force power, yeah. I would be really happy with that. Agreed. But then have a group of rebels. And no, rebels sell, you know, let's do do a story about rebels. But this is, as you said, it's turned into superheroes. But, that was what put me off. Yeah. Right. Anyway, um, so that's it for the comics. Comics. So. Yeah. So next section is comments, comments, questions, feedback, anything you want to say. No, Siri. <laughs> um, so that we want more interaction. We want this to be a conversation, forced conversation with our listeners, our... <laughs> Shut up, Siri. Um, <laughs> with our with our Facebook gang, with Instagram followers, Twitter followers. So we're gonna definitely gonna be trying to ask for more comments and questions. Um, and we've got one. So the comment of the week today that we're gonna discuss is from our old chum Daniel Hackett. Daniel Hackett. <laughs> so I thought you were trying to read it. I was like, no, I just haven't got it in front of me. So you tell me. I've got all my comic book notes. So you, okay. you, you, you pick this up, Jay. Okay. So yeah, we only had one question this week, and it was from Daniel. More questions, please. It said, if there was one bit of canon that you could change, what would it be, and why? Ooh. This is a hard, hard, hard question because. For me, there's a lot now in the canon <laughs> yeah. that I would say. <laughs> the whole of Rebels. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, we just talked about some of the things that we would change. I think straight off. Mm. But I mean, if you, I mean, if we're talking about from the films, you know, some, and something that maybe that's not so new because I think it's a, it's an easy thing to say something new. But is there anything from particularly from the original trilogy that you would change? So. Or from the prequels that obviously not like oh yeah let's get rid of Jar Jar nothing like that oh. but more and some an incident or something that's actually happened yeah I mean because look the, the truth is with the new stuff yeah you're right I I would probably ditch all the stuff from the comics um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are a, you know there's not one thing I would change there are a few mm. things I would change um, the obvious ones are things like you know, Greedo taking a shot, everyone's going to say that one. I know it's like, let's get over it. But mm. I just choose not to believe that he shot. Harm shot, mm. that was it. Boba Fett's death in the Sarlacc, that one as well I would change. But more things like the way that Anakin turned to the dark side, that whole story that I, I probably wouldn't have started um, the prequels with him as a little child like that. No. I'd have started you could have flashback at that. the point. Yeah, you could flashback that. I'd, I'd much rather start it where he's, you know, a young Training. Jedi. Um, I think I've actually said this before, is that mm. I would rather have it... I, I, I just would change his character. I would have him as this purely great... You know, like Superman, how he's a good, good guy and he, he would do anything for anybody... Obi Wan's like his, you know, like his father or his brother, and you know they've got each other's back. He cares for people, and I'd really show that he cares, and you know, cares about the state of the galaxy and all that kind of stuff. And instead of him just going, "What have I done?" and like falling on the ground and he's cut off Mace Windu's hand, I would have given it a much more mm. like his fall to the dark side should really be a tragedy, because you would. You have to love this guy. You should absolutely so love him. So I tell you what, the, the tragedy in in the episode three, mm. so much of that film. I mean, I know not a lot of people love that film, but I I actually really I, like I it. I quite like three, but That's so much one. of what what makes that film is the score, and oh. it's John Williams' score of of the downfall of of Anakin. Mm. But so haunted. Honestly, if you when you play that music on. Because it's appeared on a couple of games, like on the Battlefront 2 it was on. And, and as soon as that music came on, it just made you feel like, oh my God, the dark side, oh, mm. the Empire, it's going to crush us. You know, it's so, the music that's what made you feel. Star Wars, you know, and yeah. it, it's a really important part. I mean, there's some beautiful, beautiful bits 
after he turned into Vader, there's one scene that I love, which is where he's walking up the steps at the temple with the five over yeah. legion. I love that. I think that looks so cool. I would like to see more of him as Anakin looking Vader. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know what? It's just, for me, it's, it's the whole character arc of Anakin. Mm. I would really like to see that change. I want to believe that there's no way this guy could ever turn to the dark side. I should see him. And it's like, if anyone is going to turn, it's not going to be him. But the thing is, if you watch the Clone Wars cartoon, you'd never believe he's Darth Vader. It's not the same character, it feels yeah, like, in the cartoon. Yeah, it's not the same, and they did a better job of it in the Clone Wars. But, unfortunately, that character comes off the back of um, the one that we got. Hmm. And, uh, I, I mean, ultimately, the, the movies are the main part of the mm. Star Wars story that's where it began and ultimately if you don't yeah. want to read the books the comics the cartoons the mm. movies are the Star Wars story and so everything that you get from the movies should give you everything you need for these characters mm -hmm. and especially the character as important as Anakin slash Vader yeah. that that is the, for me one of the biggest failings of the prequels because mm. you know whatever you say about them the story is about Anakin's rise and fall to the Jedi and then fall to the dark side. Yeah. And, and i never really felt that. I always thought he was a whiny little twat and that he was always going to be an arsehole. And, mm. I don't, and that's not like Hayden Christensen's fault or anything like that. That's, no, no. that's the right. Well, it started already. with Jake Lloyd. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's, it's not his fault either. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this is the character when you flee. Because even like when people go, oh, Jake Lloyd's annoying, right? All his yippies and all that. Well, that didn't have to be in there because the no. people making the movie let that be in there. So, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. that poor guy took a lot of shit from fans, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I just think that Anakin, Anakin is my biggest change to Star Wars. Yeah. I think more blase, more an incident I'd like to change is the cringy Leia and Luke kiss and Empire. <laughs> I love that to be erased from my memory. Really? I, I, yeah, I kind of like that because it's like, he doesn't know. <laughs> I know, but it's just so, it's just so, oh God. Oh. Especially as like, you have that bit where, um, uh, in episode four, Han's like, what do you think? Princess, the guy like me, he's like, no. And it's like, Luke well yeah. fancies her. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, the problem yeah, is, you stuff. know that like, he's, Oh man, I feel like such he, an idiot. <laughs> he's fought very long and hard about Leia, and it's quite disturbing. I get a disturbance in the Force when I think about that. Look, that so, should turn him to the dark side. It should. <laughs> if anything's going if anything's gonna make you go a bit off, fucking, oh, I'm swearing a bit too much today. Sorry, guys. Um, you know, I think we should just do full swear after now. That would be stop swearing but, like, the whole way through. <laughs> let's see how the uh, series end, the uh, season end of um, Rebels goes. That oh, might yeah. be a swear fest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so there's little incidents like that. In terms of big sort of, you know, things that have potential repercussions or a big event, there's nothing, there's nothing really major. Like I say, I think it's just things like how Boba Fett went out. I agree with that. That was just a rubbish thing. And um, I don't know, there's not really much I would... Didn't get enough of Lobot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I can never get enough of Lobot. Um... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything in particular where you know oh, the fact didn't happen that make make the story so much better? I mean, again, the whole way that they handled. Yeah, I would. You would definitely stretch out Anakin's middle years, wouldn't you? I mean, that would be the most obvious thing. But that's not really changing canon. I think changing canon would be like, well, even something's when you, different. Even when you look at Anakin as a slave, right? Mm. When you look at his background, it's like he didn't have it that bad. Like, it wasn't, like, horrible well, slavery. Not, they had I their own house. To me, that's not they, slaves, yeah. No, they were I mean, just, like, uh, they worked for what? It's like, just, come on. People like, didn't get paid, but they got paid in housing or something like that. No, you can't, was... like, go too dark with Star Wars, right? Mm. But, you know, make them slaves. You can do this in a movie of, of that. That's especially, like, you know, if you made it a PG, you could do it, right? Yeah. Um, you don't need to show them getting beaten and stuff like that, but... You can allude to the fact that maybe they have had beatings and stuff, and you can. Yeah, have they a, don't have anywhere nice to live. Squalor, and they don't. Yeah, and like he's he's got this house where he's building his own pod racer. He's building his own robot. It's like, hey, I've got all this stuff. I just get it from work. It's cool. And his mum's sitting there like making dinner, and it's like, oh, no, what's what sucks. stops them from getting on a plane and going somewhere? Not a plane, uh, well, but some kind of hover thing. Have, um, 
were they meant they, they meant to have something embedded in them, or they were meant to have a collar or something like that that was going to kill them? Is it something like that? I'm sure. Or Battle Royale style. I'm sure there's something like that. I'm pretty sure there's something like that. And why well, don't we mention it in the film? Do they? It's going to be one of these books, but I've read it somewhere. I've read yeah, that somewhere. But it's not very clear in the film, is it? <laughs> no, in, in the film, there's nothing. He's just walked no. off. As far I mean, because you know, because effectively, Ali does. Out. I mean, it's not like they actually buy him, is it? Well, yeah, because Watto's like, you swindled me, and it's like, <laughs> then he just walks off. He's like, I'm going to blow up his head. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what he would do, wouldn't he? Or they may be like... scared that Qui Gon's going to. Um, oh, what do you know, <laughs> Annie? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, anyway, yeah. enough racist stereotype accents. Let's. Um... No, that's Watto's accent. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I can't think of anything else. I, I, I'll get rid of the kiss. I would. Um, uh, I no, don't know I don't, if I need um, if I need these guys to fly. Oh, I would, ah, like at tell convenient you what. moments. This is it. C three PO being made by Anakin. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah, needs yeah. to go. That oh, is that just one to step That's too stupid. far. Yeah, that was unneeded. There's no reason at all, especially as they do the whole thing where he gets his um, mind wiped and stuff. There, yeah. There's no reason for him to be connected to Anakin he, at all. He could have quite easily been a protocol droid for Amadilla. That yeah. would have been a much or, more sensible... Or he could have just been one of Bail Organa's protocol droids. Yeah. And yeah. that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Because they which already, like, would make sense. Yeah. R2 in to be Amadilla's. So, you know... Yeah. Oh, yeah, just, I guess uh, that, yeah. Let's have 3PO just... But then the that would TV. also make more sense because if he's friends of R2 already, but he's had his then mind he wiped. would just join the story. He's had his mind wiped, so he doesn't even know that. Mm. After, <laughs> you know, after, <laughs> after episode three, wiped his mind. It's like, oh yeah. my. You know, it's, <laughs> so, oh, well, there you go. So, um, anyway, I think we're done now. Are I we think done? we're done. Yeah, That's we're a- done. That's a great... Anyway, that's really great. Thank you very much, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, um, so, yeah, of course, more people. Come on each week. Send us some stuff to talk about. Um, and, uh, yeah. Join we, in we the will. conversation. <laughs> we will. And you can join in on the Facebook group. You can. That's at Forced Conversations. Yeah, just search for that. Um, you will need to request to join, but you'll we'll be more than welcome. So long as you're not... Um, a hooker or a robot. Why aren't hookers allowed to join? Well, I don't know. You, might, you could be a hooker, but just not a spammy hooker. And, and droids, we don't serve their kind? No, we don't. Oh, They're not welcome okay. here. I see. Um, you can also find us on Twitter, which is at Forced Convo, or use the hashtag Forced Convo. You can find Colin on Twitter. Captain Colin. And you can find me on, on Twitter at the underscore letter j underscore tank um you can get us on email at forcedconvo at gmail.com and you can instagram us uh, force convo and they can find audio podcasts of this show where soundcloud we've got a lovely sound account account and um you can get it directly off there and on itunes or- or you can go to iTunes and you can find us if you search for Star Wars Force Conversations. Uh, the, the, the key thing is, if you want to find us, search for Star Wars Force Conversations and you'll find us. If you just search for Force Conversations, you'll get some weirdo discussion stuff. Don't look at that. That'll hurt your eyes and you'll probably not be the same afterwards. So just put, make sure you put Star Wars in when you search. Um, and then um, also, we've also got the podcast, not only on our own wonderful feed, um, but we've also got it as part of the Taylor Network of Podcasts, where you can find us and many other geeky podcasts on the same feed. So um, you'll get access to things like Gotham by Geek and No Apologies <laughs> and Nothing's on and double page spread and JK's happy out and go check yourself and nerd is bond and others. Others. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm going to record this and we just put the same thing just, every just time. Stick it on at the end. And we just do yeah. that next time. <laughs> anyway, so we really recommend you do that. All right. So that's us done for this week. So until next week. Punch it, Chewie. 
May the force be with you. Thank <laughs> you.